Hi there, my name is Tony, and today I'd like to check out a really interesting and unique plant known as ghost plant, corpse plant, or Indian pipe. Now these are some really eerie names for a plant, and there's a good reason for that. This plant is vampiric. <laughs> I'm an idiot. So this is the corpse plant. Now, you're probably thinking, that's really pale white. They look a lot more like fungi than a plant. Well, that's because this plant completely lacks chlorophyll, the pigment that gives plants their green color in their leaves. So how can plants survive without chlorophyll? That's the pigment that gives them the energy they need through sunlight and photosynthesis. Well, like I said before, this plant is vampiric, or parasitic in nature, meaning that these things get all the energy they need from specific types of fungi in the soil. It's actually leaching the energy from these fungi. So the type of fungi that these leach off of, usually those in the Russula genus, are those that have a mycorrhizal relationship with trees, meaning that the uh, root-like filaments of the fungi, um, which are called mycelium, they're kind of like, uh, kind of the, whereas the mushroom is the flower of the fungi, the, uh, the mycelium are like the roots. Now these mycelium attach themselves to certain types of tree roots in order to uh, extract energy from the trees in the form of sugars. Now the, the fungi also give back to these trees by giving them uh, minerals. So this is kind of a symbiotic relationship between the fungi and the trees. This type of relationship is very common and is usually beneficial to both the tree and the fungi. Now what's odd are what these things do. Uh, the ghost plant, their roots attach to the mycelium of the fungi. And by doing that, they extract the, uh, the energy, usually in the form of carbon, um, from the mycelium that the mycelium got from the tree. So these things are completely parasitic. They don't give anything back to the mycelium or the tree. This is kind of this weird three-way relationship where the ghost plant is taking energy from the fungi that the, en the fungi took from the tree. It's really interesting. <laughs> and these types of plants that do this are called mycoheterotrophs. Mycoheterotrophs aren't too common due to the very specific uh, setup they need in order to survive. There are around 400 species of mycoheterotrophs known. Uh, the ghost plant, which the scientific name is, is called uh, Monotropa uniflora, it's related to, in the same family, as blueberries, cranberries, and rhododendrons. Monotropa means one turn, either because the blossom turns upright before releasing seeds, or because the young plants have a curve at the top. And uniflora means one flower, because each plant or stem only has one flower. So these plants like to grow in mature forest areas, with very rich soil, that are typically um, nearby beech trees. Though, in my area where I'm at, I live in western Pennsylvania, by the way, in this area, uh, it's mostly dominated by oaks, maples, and a lot of black cherry. I don't see any beech trees nearby. But the, um, the range of the ghost plant is, it's fairly widespread, even though it's kind of hard to find. Um, it's throughout most of of North America, the U.S., Canada. Um, you can also find it in certain areas of Mexico, Central America, Northern South America, and parts of Asia. So these things are most commonly pale white in color, though they can range from a pale pink to a deep red, with the deep red being very uncommon. Now for pollination, these are most commonly pollinated by long-tongued bees such as bumblebees. And um, when they're ready to be pollinated, they'll kind of perk up, just like a flower. <laughs> now, 
when they are upright, um, the bees will pollinate them and then they'll kind of turn brownish to blackish in color and look kind of fungal looking. After these are pollinated, they develop very tiny seeds that are dispersed via the wind. There isn't much information available on whether animals like to eat these, but I did find a case online of where um, a grizzly bear in British Columbia was documented digging up the root mass and eating it. As far as the edibility of this plant is concerned, it does have several medicinal properties. It has been used as a treatment for aches and pains, an anticonvulsant, and a sedative for restlessness. Okay, so I'm throwing this segment in the middle of the video because while I was in the process of editing, one day I was out mushroom hunting and I came across these. These pretty flowers are called pine sap, also known as false beech drops, where the scientific name is monotropa hypopides. Hypopides meaning under pine. Now since they're in the monotropa genus, they're obviously close rel closely related to the ghost plant. And these are also a mycoheterotroph. Pine sap likes to grow in the same type of habitat that ghost plants do, but they tend to prefer more acidic soils, often under pine trees. I found these in the same woodlands just down the hill from where I filmed most of the ghost plants. They are native to temperate regions of the northern hemisphere. They flower between early summer and mid-autumn. Those that flower in summer are typically yellow and smooth, while those that flower in autumn are red and somewhat hairy. The small leaves of both the pine sap and the ghost plant are vestigial, which means that they lost their function through evolution. You don't need leaves if you're parasitic. There's hardly any info on the edibility of pine sap, but they do contain glucosides, which are a potentially poisonous chemical if consumed, so I wouldn't recommend eating any of these. Okay, end segment on the pine sap flowers. Okay, so there's another way that a plant can be completely white and not have any chlorophyll without being a mycoheterotroph like the ghost plant, and that is by being an albino. Now, albinism is incredibly rare in plants, even more so than with animals. So albinism is a genetic mutation where there is a complete lack of a specific pigment that gives a creature its color. With animals, with mammals, it's typically the brown pigment melanin that we have in our skin. With plants, it's chlorophyll, the green pigment in their leaves. So in order for an albino plant to survive without chlorophyll, it's typically an offshoot of another plant. The same, the same species that it is, but it's an offshoot of the parent plant. So it's still attached to the root system of the parent underground and therefore can feed off of the parent without producing any energy of its own. So that means that the plant is actually parasitic. So two years ago I actually found an albino milkweed plant, like one of these, and it actually came back again last year. But unfortunately this year I haven't seen it so far. It came back in the exact same spot. But um, I'll show you pictures of it so you can see what it looked like and see how um, there were other milkweed plants nearby that it was likely feeding off of. Alright, so with all the informative crap finally out of the way, we can actually do what the channel name says and eat one of these things. For science. Just pick a small one. All right. All right, it's time to try this thing. These are normally found in early summer, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that before. Okay, just gonna bite off the flower head. It's bitter. It's quite bitter. Hmm. Yep. It. 
tastes like really, really bitter celery, basically. Kind of bland, but... Ugh. Oh, weird. It has a little bit of a spiciness to it. I didn't expect that. <laughs> what I read online is just pretty bland. Ugh. But, um, any... Oh, crap. I think I'm starting to get... I'm starting to hallucinate. JK, it's just better. Known as ghost plant, Indian pipe, or corpse plant, corpse duck. Oh, I found some bear shit. <laughs> I'm in 